We're the fastest growing hospital workers union in the country. NUHW members in a very bottom up selfless way have achieved high standards with their employers for them and their families and their patients. NUHW believes that to organize workers, you've got to organize them from the ground up. The leadership of NUHW is so committed to the members having a voice. We were one of the first at the table to really believe in them. Their values were in accord with our values. I became very active from the beginning because I was inspired with people that were standing up for their rights. We all have a responsibility to be involved in the union, to own the union. This work, it's not a job, it's a calling, it's a movement. NUHW is obviously not a new union. We're a relatively new name, but it's the same movement. Healthcare workers go into healthcare because they really care about people. In terms of me getting involved in the union, it was a total accident. I was just thrown into it. When I joined Local 250, the victories that we had, you know, organizing folks to stand up to their employer, to stand up for their patients, incredibly satisfying. It just fueled my love of this work. SCAU Local 250 existed from the 40s when it was founded as the first hospital workers union in the country. It was a very business-oriented union. I was with Local 250 since 1973. Then all of a sudden along came Sauerzelli. He was hired as a staff person, and I would sort of teach him about bargaining contracts. He started seeing that the old ways were no longer the right ways, that there needed to be change. In those days, it was really a staff-driven union where staff did most of that advocacy for workers negotiating contracts with little involvement by the workers. As we progressed into the 1990s, we went through a major change where we understood that if we wanted to really build powerful workers, that they would have to be intricately involved in shaping their future and shaping their union. Over a 20-year period, we organized another 100,000 hospital workers throughout the state. There were no limits to empowering workers. We used that power, that collective power, to negotiate the best healthcare contracts in the United States. We became national leaders, you know, with more responsibility and more authority. It was a very exciting thing. And I think that was one of the most important things we did do. We did create an environment where workers did feel empowered, where workers felt as if they were in control of the union. In the early 2000s, we merged with another healthcare union in Southern California, and we became SCIU UHW, or United Healthcare Workers West. By the mid-2000s, we were at about 150,000 members in one local union. And we were the model union, achieving the highest standards for private sector hospital workers in the country. We built a culture where there was an expectation that people help each other. We discovered that SCIU leaders in Washington, D.C. were secretly making deals that would have compromised the benefits we won for California hospital workers. It was like clear at the time that something was happening, right? That something was going on. SEIU was trying to take over our local union. They wanted to transfer the power relationship from the members locally to the national union. There was a fundamental break in terms of how we viewed the union and how SEIU viewed the union. What was important to SEIU was total control. We didn't fit into their plan. They wanted to silence us. They gave us a direct order to give the president of SEIU in Washington, D.C. the authority to bargain with our employers without the input of the members that work for that employer. They wanted to take the easy way out. They wanted to get something without actually struggling for it. I mean, it was stunning and shocking and, and made us angry uh, that what workers sacrificed for decades they, you know, like within weeks, 
had had given up. We will never give up on I'm our belief delegate. that the members are the voice of our union. Yeah! We called emergency meetings, and we voted. Members voted almost unanimously to reject that order. SCIU put the union in trusteeship. Fired the 130 member elected rank and file executive board. Fired about a hundred of our union staff. At the end of 2008, beginning of 2009, the international union dismissed our executive board, even though we were elected. They basically dismantled our local union. We were concerned. To take that power from us meant life and death because we knew that we were being sold out. The trusteeship is SEIU getting rid of all of those democratically elected leaders and replacing it with their own hacks. It's like a hostile takeover. It, it was sort of like um, an invasion. I told them that SEIU was coming. All of a sudden, there was 1,000 SEIU reps parachuted into California. And when they came down, they came into our facilities 15 deep, 20 deep. It was unbelievable. We decided that we were going to occupy the Union Hall because the members of our local owned our Union Hall. We wanted to protect our headquarters. There was a group of us that would sleep in the LA office. We wanted to be there to be prepared in case you know, SEIU came in in the middle of the night and just sort of took over the offices. We stood up and we fought and we organized ourselves. We rallied. They decided to make a last stand and they occupied the buildings across the state for some number of weeks. Because SEIU was wanting to storm these offices and members were unwilling to leave. It was a horrendous, scary, frightening situation, but demonstration of the commitment of these workers to make, maintain control of their union. We had air mattresses, people would sometimes bring us food, and you would have, like, you would have shifts, like maybe a week you're staying in the office, and then, you know, another group of people would stay in the office the next week. It was like a citadel for us. It was the place where our hopes and dreams lived, and where we came together as brothers and sisters. It was like our home and SEIU eventually was able to get some kind of document through the courts that allowed the police to come and remove the remaining members. And we were devastated. What really made me angry is that they didn't just destroy the union, they were erasing its history. Leaders of SEIU had no idea of the depth of our organization. The executive board decided that we were going to create a new organization. 120 elected rank and file leaders got together in Los Angeles and Oakland. We were creating a resistance and giving our members an opportunity to fight back. The anger was turned into drive and commitment to not give up. Once we decided that we were going to move forward with a new union, there obviously were a lot of unknowns. There was no how-to guide on how to do this. In the spring of 2009, we decided it was time to have a founding convention, and NUHW was born on that day. We came here to San Francisco, to this school here on Church Street, and the parking lot was full. When I came to the school, it was so exciting to see so many people. We were excited to fight to make this union strong, to build this from the ground up. You are the heart and the soul of UHW and SEIU can never take that away from you. I had no idea how many folks were gonna come and when I walked into this school and saw literally hundreds uh, of leaders from all over the state that drove, you know, for six, eight, ten hours, right, on their own time, on their own dime, uh, to come to this historic moment to launch their union. What an incredibly satisfying moment. 
And there was great enthusiasm. I, I remember the energy level in, in that room. N-U-H-W. N-U-H-W. It was a powerful, powerful thing to be here and to see that sea of red and to just see all the people here that really did feel like a family. I could not be more proud. These people that came here was ready to fight. These people were the warrior leaders. I wasn't afraid to challenge the old union. We declared that we're no longer going to be a part of SEIU, that we're going to be in UHW. We're going to fight to the end. It was a turning point for NUHW. And within weeks, thousands of workers petitioned the National Labor Relations Board to leave SEIU and join NUHW. And us believing in each other, that's what kept us together as a family. NUHW's values, being patient-centered, being member-driven, that is very satisfying to me, and NUHW continues to deliver. We knew that not only would we survive as a union, but we would be able to build the type of union that empowered workers to be able to provide the best quality patient care and mental health care in the United States. This is that small group of determined people coming together and changing history. and. Um, there's something so beautiful about that. We made it. We made it. And if we don't know our history of where we came from, we will lose it. It took thousands of people to have believed in this so intensely that they willed it to happen. That level of commitment, I've never seen anywhere else. That's NUHW. This is a fight that we can't give up. This is history.